Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello out there, all my little sex fiends. Now, we talk about a lot of sex, a lot of ways to make the sexual encounter amazing which is really good because we need a little bit of a amazement from time to time in the bedroom how to make our relationships a little better or what the funniest things that are out there about sex and how they affect us which probably not really a lot but it's always fun to know what somebody else is doing from time to time not make us look like you know a little strange ourselves but how do we like a lot of this getting into that partner or yes there is masturbation you're absolutely right completely up to you and your choice however you know what makes us attractive sexually or in general to same or different sex we whoever you're attracted to what makes us attracted to them and what's them what makes them attracted to you know us and you know there's that lore of attraction where like attracts like but you also have it where opposites attract and it's that chemistry that fire that's there in that you know that every time you look at that person you're like your body just goes crazy now how do you you know work with having this law of attraction what you know how do you manifest that steamy sex life you know and law of attraction comes in everywhere remember we as human beings homo sapiens to be scientifically correct and just sort of go shopping with our eyes. And there are those occasions where the original, there was no attraction, but you know, you're hanging out with this person for a while and you get to know them. And as you get to know what their personality is, all of a sudden that personality turns those looks or how that person looks into the most attractive person that you've ever seen and you've got to have them. See, law of attraction is a little tricky there. And likes to play with you and throw you around and see if you're listening. Hey, it happens. Happens to the best of us. Now, like I said, the law of attraction really evolves around that basic principle of like attracts like. We use law of gravity. Same concept. Uh what's gravity doing it's pulling us down for us to stand up on earth other than that we'd be floating all around so it's kind of sort of got us grounded all this law of attraction law of, you know everything basically but we're just talking about law of attraction right now is 
universal. It's it's all over, you know. It's basically the law of the universe, and it's always, always in motion. It does not take a break because that's how the universe works. Think about it. What would happen if the Earth stood still? See, to us on Earth right now, we think it is sitting still. But 99.9% .9 of us know that it is not. We're on a constant rotation. That law of attraction constantly working for you. You always really attract things that give you energy. You attract these things into your life. They give you energy. They turn you on. So you want that in your life. You focus in on it and you're like paying attention to it because it's, it's got you in its grasp. Well, that's the same thing when it comes to sex and pot, finding a partner and all of that good stuff. And there are a few ways that, you know, you could get this to even work better for you. And there are like five, well, I'm just going to give you five because I thought this was really good. Uh, ways to, you know, basically have that law of attraction work for you and in a positive manner, like all over you. And whoever it is you are attracted to, hopefully it's going, you know, it's mutual. And you know if it is for the most part. So generally with men, if the woman doesn't give them time of day, boom, they move on. Women, well, nowadays it's more like that. But for the most part, women, I think, really keep the, uh, that, that crush going and it builds. Whereas with the men, I think after a couple of tries, they'll just give up. Yeah, that's all there is to. Or they'll mock their territory, just like a dog would. <laughs> and they'll continue. <laughs> you know? It all depends on what mood they're in. But, your first step in, you know, that attractional law with that sex. And to get it to work for you. Clarify why you want it. You always gotta know why you want something. Because it's going to have some sort of meaning to your life. Some sort of, it's going to make your life better. And this is really, this works with manifesting good sex as well. And this is while using this law of attraction. And it works this way. We, you want it. Why? You got you to know why you want it. If you sat back and thought about it. And then you realize you don't have really a lot of reasoning as to why you want it. And the really only reason that comes up is lust. Uh, well, unless that the person's on the same wave like you are, ain't worth it. Because you're not going to get what you want out of it. You're not going to get that satisfaction or anything like that. Because it's always going to be two-sided. Uh, and you don't want that to happen. If you, you know, do this by writing it down, write down what you exactly or how you want your sexual encounter to go, how you want it to build and keep going and going and going. Whereas you get to that point and boom, you got what you want sexually um, in, or in every way possible. You know, when you, when you are finding out why and you're clarifying it, even if you're writing it down or you're doing that mental note in your head, uh, you know, be specific. Describe as many details as possible when you're clarifying because it's almost like a, a pros and cons list. I hate to put it so generic. But it is. It's almost like a pros and cons list. Clarify it. This is something that you want. This is something you've got to work towards to get. Keep it realistic. It, when I mean realistic is stick to those things you really actually believe in. And don't sky, uh, sigh or stray from that. 
the why is really, really important. Because it actually puts into effect or because, you know, your intentions really affect whether you will attract a positive or negative experience, sexual experience. And if you go into it for all the negative reasons, well, that sexual um, situation is going to be a negative experience. So you really need to uh, clarify that and know exactly why this is all it is. If you want to go into sex and you want that law of attraction of sex and you go into it just for the reason of like because you're lonely well then it's not going to come out as a positive it's going to come out as a negative because you're only going in there for your own selfish reasoning is basically to get laid because you're lonely and you want that physical touch that physical feeling that physical you know that emotion which is not physical but can be you know outwardly shown physically and you want those to all be positive you'll always enjoy your sex or that attraction to that individual will be more welcoming by that individual in all manners because giving out positives you get positives got to remember these things i know they're little things that we seem to forget from time to time but those things are the things that are really really important <laughs> so you gotta look at it that way now we always want a positive outcome in our sexual attraction and everything else that goes along with the sex the outcome, the fun, the the actual action of it and leading up to it. You know, all of the stuff before it makes it even that much more better. Probably dug in a double negative there, but hey, you got the hint. So, moving right along. Well, you've clarified what you wanted. And you actually really thought about it. You put a little thought process, you know, a lot of thought process into it, a little thought process which built up to a big thought process. And it's no longer for because you feel lonely. It's actually something that you want. Now, if it's something you want, what do we do next as homo sapiens, human beings? We visualize what the sex is going to be like. At least we hope the sex is going to be like. We visualize the sex. That sex life between two people. And you have a lot of energy into it. A lot of thought process into it. And what is all this energy doing? It is creating a reality. A sexual reality for you. It's really important to, you know, basically remember that what it is, is your feeling that attracts when it comes to this manifest, you know, manifestation, manifestation. Hmm. Um, it's your feeling, what you put into it, how you visualizing it, because what do we do? Okay, now we're attracted to somebody, and the second thing we do for the most part is we basically visualize how that person is in the bedroom. How would they be having sex with them? Yes, we go straight to the the dirt. You know, get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. For the most part, you generally wait, and we'll get into that later. But nowadays, it's more get it out of the way, see if you like it. Boom. You like it. What happens when you like it? You actually start to increase your feeling and your attraction toward that individual. Um, visualization is like the best way to get into feeling or into the feeling of having sex. You visualize it. Now you're thinking, OMG. I can't, I gotta have this person. I 
got to get them in the bed. You know, you got to make the most of it. Find spots, you know, find a quiet place for yourself. Think about it. And just take some deep breaths and picture it all in your head. How you feel when you're having sex with this individual. What things you can do. You start thinking about, wow, I wonder if they like to do this. Because it's something that you like. You can visualize how things are going to be done by the face, the body, the voice. And just wrapping that up with the personality of the person that you are attracted to and you want to have sex with. Basically, what gets you going or what's turning this law of attraction, sexual law of attraction, to make it reality? Because that's where we are trying to get to. And, you know, you stop visualizing being alone. A lot of people are boisterous about it, and they'll just tell you straight out. They'll come right to you and say, like, men will do it more than women. Well, and even women do it. We've gotten bad. We have gotten bad. <laughs> but it's done. It's it's human nature. You know, just you're sitting there and imagining that sexual, because you're really attracted to that person. You imagine that sex in the room, you know, bed, and how it would be with that person, what their body's going to do. Just looking at the shape of it because you're attracted to their body. How that, you may be looking at, you know, if it's a female, you're looking at their uh, breast and wondering how they're going to jiggle and how you get that in your mouth and you start you know kissing and sucking on the, the nipples and everything or how you're going to grab if they have this big voluptuous behind how you're going to grab that or you know smack that and how it jiggles just having that visual input gets you like almost one step closer on that note we are definitely going to take a break here it's the first break in the show so go get something to drink something to eat if you already have it stay comfortable because i will be back after a short break with more sex talk with andra still on the search of that one true love on the limbo in this crazy world of dating marriage relationships well listen to the golden state media concepts relationship podcast your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra. We have the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back. Um, where we're talking about, you know, sexual law of attraction and how right now we're talking about you want to manifest that. And you basically, you know, that first step and everything is basically clarify what in the world you want. Okay. Once you've figured out the, the true meaning as to why you want it and not just lust or you want that person in your sexual bed or you're attracted to that person overall, then you can like move on and visualize what it would be like to have sex with that individual and basically you know on a female looking at her breasts and saying what you could do with it with your mouth uh if they have a booty lich's behind backside how you could just grab onto that and jiggle it or just give it a spanking you know and then the opposite end with a 
a man just looking at that body and just watching the ripped abs or you know you like a little bit more meat on a man and very you know but comfortable in who they are and know what they are you would do what you want with it you know in the first place most people look for on a man man or woman who's ever attracted they go straight to the crotch area the general area is there package there so they're visualizing that when it comes to a man and how they can basically use that to their advantage so guys if you get a sock in your pants take them out and right? if you get socks in your bra take them out <laughs> um because it's not gonna be very good and when we left off we were discussing the visual manifestation of that uh, sexual allure law of attraction you know and you go in there and you you just by yourself and you're imagining how it would be to have sex with that individual you know you start to visualize your perspective partner or your partner um their face body their voice their personality how that's all going to um factor in to that awesome sexual um deed basically that sexual bedroom okay just sex in general <laughs> and just kidding that you have that in your head and when you get into that room like in, this could be like a two-way street here which it should but it also could be a good thing and a bad thing on the opposite side is you get in there and you're visualizing having sex with this individual and you're one you know what you're going to do to each body part on this individual or what they're going to do to you you're going to watch things jiggle and jam and then you get in there and because you've thought so hard about how it would be you can't perform so don't I mean, yes, do all these things, visualize it, but make sure that when it comes down to it, that you actually can perform as well. And I know a lot of people get up there, oh, I ain't got a problem with that. I can perform anyway. Uh, and things like, yep, yeah, hey, there are those individuals who can, and there are those individuals who are just imagining this and this is what they've imagined their whole entire life or the sex part of it and then when they finally get with the person or the individual however you want to say it, that partner in the bed that they visualized for so long in their life that they cannot perform and then they become embarrassed you know then that puts on another part of what's going to stand in the way of having you know it work for the most part and this is where you know if you're clarifying it visualizing it and all the stuff like that and you're putting it into effect without going overboard with the thought process or visualization of it then you're okay you know and even if you get in that position most of the time if that individual really likes you whatever they're gonna still accept you you've got to be able to accept yourself and you know what has happened and it helps you get past that and where you can continue on and not have that embarrassing feeling if that's what you are when this really doing all of this is it's just leading the way for like anything to help you get into having that feeling of being in the same room with that individual and then foreplaying and having sex with that individual hey you might want to skip the foreplay and go straight to the sex because there's ways your mind is at right then and there and once you you know have evoked that mental that strong mental picture that you have and you've done the first part then you kind of sort of got to shift your focus onto how it felt and what that sex meant to you and how it was was it a good sense a good feeling were you happy with it did it make you laugh did it make you cry did you get embarrassed did you you know all of these feelings come forward did they like it 
you know, that's one of the biggest. Did that person like it? It's something we think about. Now, when you are having all the little happy feelings, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, that experience is going to be a positive one for you. And your energy levels are going to be so high that it's going to give you more life, more life, and more reason as to why you want to, you know, you're, or you are sexually attracted to that individual. And, you know, you can continue, you know, visualize it, it really, and this really, from what I'm going to say next, it really puts you into this next thing. Whereas now that you've gotten, you've done that and you've actually had the experience, now you can visualize, we're still individual, on a daily basis to get more of or manifest more of your desires that you want to be met sexually with that individual. You know, it's a it's a step process. We don't think about it as we do it. We just see, say, and basically try and get to the do in a short amount of time. Sometimes that takes away from everything instead of kind of savoring and, and knowing. I mean, when you go home, after you see someone that you're attracted to, what do you do? You think about that person. Or if you're ever going to see that person again, it might have been someone passing you on the subway or uh, passing you. Oh, you pass this person every day in the in getting your tea or coffee or getting that smoothie. And the next day you look forward to it because you're going to see that person again. And you always say to yourself, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. Well, this is how you work up to that. Now, uh, going on to the third step in our sexual uh, attraction. Crush your limiting beliefs. I think I touched on that a little, but we are going to go into it now. You're going to get rid of all of those thoughts that are limiting you. Or blocking you. Or your way, shall I say, of you getting or manifesting what you want sexually with that person. Got to get rid of all of those those blocking things. Things that are going to make you not go up there and do it and talk to them and actually fulfill your sexual attraction to this person. Who is to say the sexual experience may have been a negative one? But you put so much thought into it. Give them a second try. The next time, it you know, that first one's always, you are learning each other. I know it's an odd way to say it, but you're learning each other's body. You're learning what's turning each of you on. And, you know, some things you like, some things you don't. So you got to remember this. Don't put a, don't put a, a limit on it, especially not the first time. Let it, obviously, negative bestows le- negative, positive bestows positive. And you want to maintain that positive. You want to maintain a, a very good outlook on it and give off the, all those energy, that positive energy, so that those limiting or holding you back thoughts are basically overpowered by all the positives you know there are some i mean there are some limiting beliefs out there a lot of people uh probably don't even think as to why or you start second basically you start second guessing yourself and this is where you know this actually interferes with that how you manifest your a better sex life for you. And it's like, I'm not attractive. That's your own self-esteem. Okay. It's not exactly what you find attractive. Yes, we all have our own little perks and quirks when we look in the mirror every day of the week. But when we are looking from the outside in and another person is looking at you, 
there is you need to find out say wow okay you find me attractive we always we are our worst our own worst enemy that saying is so freaking true that we are our own worst enemies so what we look at in the mirror that person doesn't see it we see it so if we go away from that and put all you know replace that with positives oh and saying no i don't care because that person's attracted to me you start looking at yourself in a different way as well in other words i'm not good looking which kind of sort of goes with the attractive i'm terrible at relationships i find this to be more of an excuse than anything you're terrible at relationships. What are we, a pretty woman? Seriously. I think this is just a way where individuals, it makes it that much easier so they don't go into a relationship, but yet get the sex out of it. They get the sex they want from the person they want it from. So, you need to stop that. I'm going to be alone forever again if you put your head into that thought process yes you will be alone forever because you're not allowing somebody in i'm not good in bed so basically did someone tell you this or is it because you feel that you're supposed to know more what makes you think the person that you're attracted to sexually knows any more than you do everybody is different in the bedroom and if you feel you're not good in bed let that person teach you and if it's the opposite way teach them showing what you like you're actually going to flourish in the bedroom when it comes to that if you look at that from that point of view i'll never find true love well what are you looking for where are your standards Everybody tells us, you know, you never go below your standards of what you're looking for in a partner. Oh, well and true. There might be something particular that you like and there's one person for everybody out there. But if you go into it with that thought process, yeah, you are putting too much into it where you need to basically stand back and look at it and say why don't we give this person a chance i really like this person i find them attractive i'm actually imagining how they are in bed and it's a total turn on let's try that might just be your true love what are you looking for their true love no one will love me if you don't let somebody in of course not as simple as that no one wants to talk to me uh, does somebody always have to come up to you and talk to you how come you can't initiate how come you can't go in there and say hey you know i was looking at you from afar i find you very attractive little things little things it's, they're not going to kill you they're either going to tell you they're with somebody or they're not attracted to you or you might just get the total opposite uh, there are people out there who try try every day to get that one person that they are really attracted to and then the minute you know they're not giving them the prospective partners not giving them the time of day but then the minute they turn around and they stop all of a sudden that other person is like why'd they stop i thought it was really cute well now it's their turn so on that note, we are going to take our second break in the show. And when I come back after the break, we will continue our sexual law of attraction topic. So don't go away. And if you need to take a bathroom break or you want to get someone something to drink or something to drink, hey, this is the time to do it. So I will meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andra. 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello, and welcome back to the third segment in the show. I hope you are comfortable in all of that good stuff that goes along with that. We were on the topic of limiting beliefs, and I named a few, which everybody knows of. I don't think I have to explain them any more than I did. Uh, You know, these things are very, very important, because if you sat back and looked at them and clarified it first, I don't think you'd have one of those uh, beliefs that would limit you, your thought process, when it came to that sexual attraction to a prospective partner or to your partner in general. Who's to say? There are a lot of, you know, these limiting beliefs are false. They're all false. They only exist in your mind. And these are really, we get these thoughts and all humans do it. All people do it. We get these thoughts because we are comparing our past experiences to what would possibly happen in the future. And we don't want to feel like that. So what do we do? We sabotage ourselves. And we are well known for doing that. Or we sabotage something that's really good. And it happens. You may not even realize that you are doing it, but you are doing it. And it's that's just how we are. A lot of people can work, you know, go right on and just say, boom, this, is, I'm not going to have this done again. And boom, they can move on beyond that and give that another chance. But a lot, the majority of the population feels that way. They're all false. We're just so in tune to feeling, you know, we don't want what happened in the past to happen in the future. And, you know, that's absolutely right. That's why we stopped looking for that better person. It could have been a very bad relationship where there was domestic violence. Very, very bad. But you survived. You survived. you got to look at it that way. And with that, you go forward. As that law of attraction, especially sexual most people have the tendency to attract the same type of individual. You gotta break that cycle because you're the only one who's limiting yourself. And if you are in a relationship like that, stand up. It's hard. Stand up. Make that plan. Work with somebody who can help you. Yeah, there are a lot of agencies out there that are there for you for help. So, now, you need you know to get rid of these limiting beliefs or these negative beliefs and the first step in the process of doing that is 
to acknowledge them. Just like we had to clarify what we wanted or what you wanted, shall I say, in in that attraction, that sex, that person. Clarify what you want. You know, acknowledge those beliefs. Now, if you're witnessing them, you're also now able to recognize that there's no substance to them. And you can get up now and, and, and just start working on eliminating them from your life. Because that's where you want to be. You need to put you on a pedestal and give yourself a pat on the back for having that strength to witness or to acknowledge those limiting behaviors instead of running from them or letting them run your life or run the, the possibility of having that good relationship. Yeah, sounds like a talk show host. I know. <laughs> but it's true. You know, we have a tendency to self-mutilate ourselves. Even if it's, you know, physically is very bad. So you need help. But mentally, oh, absolutely. Mentally, everybody does it. People are better at it in hiding it. That's the only difference. Now. On to our lovely fourth step in our getting our groove on that sexual law of attraction. Recite affirmations of love. Yes, sounds like we am sending you guys to church. Absolutely right. However, once you've identified those limiting beliefs, The way to get rid of them and a good way to get rid of them, use affirmations. And what are affirmations? Most people know that they are positive phrases or statements used to challenge the negative thoughts you have. Yes, that is the dictionary uh, definition. But you're basically in layman, you are replacing your negative thoughts with positive thoughts and it's going to start to build your energy your attraction then you can start you know you kind of sort of maintaining that feeling whereas in step two with visualization you're starting to maintain that good feeling from there you're visualizing it. you can actually go backwards to the step and look at it and say you know i can actually visualize this i can do this now and that's what it is all about now how do you get started with this there are a few ways you can um there are a lot of affirmations that you can, that are a fit for you or that would work for you, you might make up your own, which is awesome because that's even better. And these are all there to help get rid of those negative thoughts so you can have that positive attraction. Ooh. I'm lovable and worthy of receiving love. Hey. You deserve love. Let's get down to the nitty gritty on that one. That's put in so many words where all you need is you, three. You deserve love. Which comes to our next one, which starts with reserve, uh, deserve, which is you deserve to have fun and feel good, which comes with you deserve love. All intertwined. In other words, I open my heart and trust that my lover will arrive soon. So you're kind of opening up your heart to let somebody in. Someone new, a better person, a better situation. Some good ass sex in there, but hey. I know that my lover is waiting for me. There's always somebody out there, like I said, 
there's always somebody out there there is someone for every person out there as humans we kind of sort of go through it sometimes the wrong way and i think that has a lot to do with probably finally finding who that individual is and being all of a sudden you're faced with it and you get all the nerves and all these giddy feelings come up and <laughs> you don't know what to do so you say something that's probably wrong overly sexual oh uh, you want to you know and people do it you get people come and say oh what i would do to you in the bedroom that's maybe not how you started out that conversation if you knew the individual and they were in the same group of friends and you knew that they can handle it and they're going to come back with a good one well it may work there but if you are going into it for the first time you might want to uh, tone it down a bit <laughs> uh, obviously your own feelings are your highest priority and they should always be positive and good for yourself so you want to attract love obviously or good positive feelings about love into your life with a little bit more well a lot more easily than what you are going about it now because apparently it hasn't worked so everybody deserves love told you um, that's like number one on the list you may not think it because this is how this person has treated you alter your life to the point where you start to believe it but everybody deserves love might come in different fashions but it is everybody deserves love now a lot of people like to put their trust in how the universe or how life goes to bringing that partner to them that's one way of affirming your visualities <laughs> uh being ready as simple as that you are ready to meet to you your perfect partner everybody's partner perfect partner shall i say is a different especially in the bedroom especially in the looks you know you're looking at something when the two of you go out and how everybody is are viewing you to when you get in the bedroom and what they can do for you sexually remember that attracting love and romance into your life always very very good uh always very very a positive thing that you need to go for because everything needs to be positive for things to go good positive like i said if you have a little bit of all this just that you get in there and the sex was a little wonky for lack of a better word uh being able to rebound from that is what you need because then you go on to the next time you do it you're gonna avoid trying to do that same move in the bedroom and the two of you laughing about it is actually a positive sign don't take it so negative last with this would be you're going to release whatever the outcome is when it comes to your sexual needs and sexual attraction and that law of attraction you're basically here just stepping back and you're just letting outside factors universal factors lead the way for you you got to let it in though you got to be willing to let it in let some things just be controlling i think it really goes to show with the um that saying is a lot of people will say to you you know i've been looking for somebody constantly and the minute i stopped look who walks through my door or 
that's when it walked through your door. Because you stopped looking, because you just let it take its natural course, sexually and everything. You went in there, you were attracted to that individual. You sat back and visualized what it would be to ride that individual or to basically jump that individual, depending on how you want to look at it, in the bedroom. And you're visualizing how good it is. Now, visualizing can get out of hand. If you over-visualize something, you're putting way too much stock in how well the sex is going to be that you get in there. You kind of sort of built yourself up for a bit of disappointment. Because if you get in there and you're having sex and it, what your visualization of it was and what is actually happening is going to give you a negative vibe and it's probably going to knock you right back down because you thought it would be better. Now you got to look at this person, especially if you work with this person or especially if um, this person is who you see every day of the week. Every sexual encounter with anybody or multiple, shall I say, isn't always going to be different. Every sexual encounter will be different. And you need to know that. And accepting that part is the best. Because if you if it didn't work the first time, hey, try, try again. You really still attracted this individual. Don't let those, whatever happened the first time, kind of sort of take over and make your decisions for the next time. Because 10 to 1, if you're still putting too high of a ceiling of expectation on it and the sexual experience is not going to be fun it's as simple as that now on that thought we are going to take our final break in the show for today so sit back relax remain comfortable and i will meet you back here after a short break for more sex talk with Andra. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back to the final segment of the show, or at least this one, (laughs) where our discussions all that sexual law of attraction and basically landing that sexual partner what you want but in a positive way because that's what we want we want positive outcomes when it comes to our sexual experiences and a lot of this comes with affirmations for sex like we're gonna yeah, you're gonna go through some steps to get there to bypass, put you in the ready position in order to accept their next mind blowing sexual encounter. Always, always a good one. Obviously doing you know, that 
clarifying, visualizing positives, you know, admitting to your affirmations, all you know, acknowledging and all that good stuff. It you you want to feel that you want to feel empowered and confident during sex, and you want to unleash your sexual beast. Okay, so guys, you let the man down in the pants talk for you from time to time. Sometimes more times than others. But hey, that's a good thing in, in some instances. How you use it uh, will not blow a possible encounter sexually. But think about that. Also, it it, ex it gets you, you know, your sexuality going and percolates it. So everybody stop looking at you. And it's, you know, those affirmations are always, you know, they're negative thoughts that are getting replaced with positive ones that kind of build you up in that confidence. So you can do, you know, all you want in the bedroom. And it brings up whatever you're feeling inside of you to the highest point. Your vibes get going and all help kind of sort of breaks loose. Obviously, it's what it is. That's how we are. We're humans. <laughs> that's all. That's how our thought processes work. But, you know, you want, you know, saying to yourself, I'm relaxed and calm. If you are too, oh my, you know, you're, you're letting that inside feeling be shown through the outside on how you feel. It might just be a royal, if you come on, you know, too strong, might just be that royal no-no. Step back. Be confident and empowered. Because that's what it is. Obviously, are you ready for it? Are you ready for what's going to come with it? You want somebody in your life. Some people get up and say, you know, they're basing it all on one. You've been along for, alone for a long time. And now that you, you want it. And I'm sure a lot of people who have heard, is it what you want or is it what you need? See, if you need it, kind of so it's not going to come to the way you want it. See? Want always comes back in the end. If you want it, you're ready for it, you deserve it. It is out there. Feeling good. Out there. Own it. What is your highest priority? To feel good for yourself and everything else. Tell me that is not true. Everybody wants to feel good about themselves. And some people just need a little help getting there and figuring out how to get there. You might need a little help from your friends or even from, like, you know, therapist used to say therapy is not a bad thing, it's there to help you. So it is good to feel good. And really stepping back and saying, I'm ready for a beautiful experience. Or you're just looking forward to that individual sitting on your face. Who is to say? Um, choosing to have fun or choosing, you know, that you deserve it. Absolutely. You want to attract the love into, into your love life. I'm trying to do this easily. Some people actually go into like relationships and they fall too quickly because for the most part they they want it so bad that they will look for anything. And that's not generally a good thing because then in the end, when you start to realize that, oh, what have you done? And the sex really wasn't that good to begin with. Yeah, you kind of sort of got to back out of that now. Or at least try and find a way to get out of it. Don't look needy. And, you know, being ready to receive like that sex and love that comes with it 
and overall abundance is really what you are trying to put back into your life because everybody deserves it. Get rid of all those past experiences, those negative experiences, put some positive ones in there. Look for it, let it come to you. Because going out every day and just looking at, you know, different parts of individuals that you're attracted to instead of that whole package kind of puts a damper on things. Bad words calm or you be called bad names in the end. <laughs> I think men are easily acceptable, but when it comes to a woman, granted it's different now, but there still is a small amount of that if they feel that you know there's too much you're putting yourself out there so now choose to enjoy the present moment that you are in because it is you think like loving thoughts acceptable thoughts all good thoughts put them all in there put them in the little you know it's funny because when the, the mind is portrayed in like a cartoon or on something, whereas you go, they go into the brain to see what that individual is thinking of, they do it as like a filing cabinet. Hey, if that's what you need to do, put it into your filing cabinet because that's really what the brain is. Yeah, you got the draw with all your sexual wants and desires and it's going to overflow because you're going to try and get them to go in with everything else we saw that they mesh all together so you get the good thing that you get so you need to remember that as well um what is your purpose for it what, what is it that you want out of it i mean is it just so that you get laid well that's not a good thing you know you can do that whenever you want how you want for the most part but you need to know what you want from it. Do you want to feel better? Do you want to, you know, receive that? You want to get that happy back in your life. So remember that's where you're at. That's what you want to do. Keep saying these things to yourself. And then all of a sudden it becomes second nature, just like everything else. Look at your body in a different way. Some people are already all set with that portion. They like their body. They like the way it is. They're not concerned. They're very happy. And believe it or not, when you are happy about your body, which most people know, it actually comes through in how you present yourself. I know there's such a body image that is out there. I think now things are kind of started changing. Come on, Barbie comes in different ways now has anybody gone into the toy store lately and looked you know they're starting to put all types of women in like before or individuals shall i say where before uh you know there was that set body type that you were supposed to have just to be attracted to the opposite or same sex either or whatever with a woman, it was that 36, 36, 24, 36. With the man, it was a six-pack abs. Or having six-pack on your six-pack. And be physically fit. Now it's like, people are starting to realize, you know, every package has something good. Uh, again, it's not the size that matters. It's how you use it. And how you help them to use it. Partners out there. Be grateful for your own body because it's yours. If you're unhappy with it, then you need to take a step back and find out what you want because it ain't going to happen sexually. If you don't like your body and somebody's actually looking at your body and getting sexually turned on by it, it you know, and then you're like, you're just going to bed with them because they supposedly found, you know, you attractive. 
they probably really do find you attractive. So you need to kind of like your own body. And getting your mindset into it sexually actually makes that sexual experience 10 times better. Um, being thankful for the person who is your partner if you're already in a relationship. Having that giddiness of a small child when you get your first piece of candy or something. Or you're getting a toy. Uh, just having that, wow, I can't wait to have sex with that person. I'm like, this is what I'm going to do and talk to talk. I mean, you're already sitting there making out like teenagers in a car or something. Or just you go over each other's house or whatever the case may be. And you're sitting down watching a movie and making out. You haven't gotten, you know, the third base yet. But you're almost there. And just it's a building. I mean, when is a good time for you to have sex? It usually states after five dates believe it or not although nowadays that has changed because they kind of sort of have sex get it out of the way and you will find that individual who will get up and say to you hey let's just get this out of the way see how it feels we don't like it we're not going to go any further they base it on the sex because ultimately sex is what uh turns those feelings around and makes them deeper that's what it's about. And that's how we all view it. Are you ready to give and receive? Not only in the sexual bed, but what comes out of it with feelings and those deep emotions of love. Be open to it, at least. If you're going to go into it. If you're open to it, then you're going to get a better outcome of knowing if this is what you want or not. So remember it that way. Uh, let Whatever your body is saying, talk for you. Body language is a big thing when it comes to sex. What is that saying? Is it, uh, your check, your body's writing checks you can't cash. <laughs> so, hey, you may already know what you want to do, or your body already knows what to do and how it feels. Just getting that partner that's equally sexually the same is going to turn you on and just do what you want and it comes naturally you don't got to talk you're going to be in sync with this individual you got to trust you your body everything that comes with it so sashay it because you have it let go of those inhibitions especially in the sexual bed you're not exactly letting someone in if you have all of these and the sex is not going to be good. There are so many things that you can look at. So many affirmations that you might want to tell yourself when it comes to that sexual law of attraction. Uh, but what is always on that top of the list is to be positive. Positive, 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 positive. Because if you are negative, total turn off, total turn off, they're not even okay. You're resonating that in everything you do. Your body is saying negative thoughts. It ain't even talking. Your mouth is. Negative talk is bad. Positive, good sex, good positive sex, even better. Hey, you're learning each other. Don't put such a high restraint on it. Because sex is there for fun and to grow and to make you closer with that individual. On that thought, this is the end of my show for now. Please, uh, as usual, practice safe sex. If not for yourself, for your partner. If you are trying anything new and you're letting that person in, please educate, communicate, consent. Very, very important when it comes to the game of sex. So I do thank you for tuning into the GSMC Sex Podcast which is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. 
I ask that you do subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Please give us five stars, a good review. It not only helps me, but it does help the GSMC Podcast Network to know that they are bringing what you want to hear. Also, seek us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, because we are there. Show us some love by clicking on that little heart. Boom, boom. Also, hit that little thumbs up if it is a thumbs up. Give us that yeah, all right. And on Facebook, you have several things that you can pick. So choose wisely. Leave us a comment, please, positive. Or leave something what you want to hear on the show. On that note, again, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And have awesome sex. Go right through the sunset. That's all there is. Bye-bye until next time. From your host, Andra. Where the talk is about sex. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.